Ko Zuzampo, welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sunam Pem. Our top stories this week. His Holiness the Jay Kempo launches our Genku initiative. People advised to be extra cautious and observe COVID-19 health safety protocols as the cold season sets in. And the first ever South Asian Football Federation High School Championship to be played next year. Now the details. Health Ministry believes it is in the hands of every individual citizen to fight the pandemic. To remind citizens of their responsibilities, the Our Genku initiative was launched by His Holiness the Chikhempo. Our Genku is to instill a sense of collective responsibility amongst the general population in fighting the pandemic. While citizens have shown responsibility and volunteerism in times of the current pandemic, the government says continued support is needed from all individuals to fight off the pandemic. During one of the press briefs earlier this month, the health minister highlighted that while many countries have enforced fines and penalties for breach of protocols such as not wearing masks in public areas, our Ginku will be a sustainable approach. It is expected to empower people to shoulder responsibility themselves. So far, uh, the pandemic uh, we has, has tested our strength and resilience, and we have proven that uh, we are doing fairly well. But I think, like I said, the battle is not over. Uh, we have miles to go uh, till the vaccine comes or till uh, uh, the treatment comes. So we want to reinforce through Genku the individual personal responsibility of building the nation and, and really saving the nation, uh, not just from COVID, but from other uh, non-communicable diseases as well. As part of the initiative, the government intends to engage various social media influencers to inform and influence the general population, particularly the youth, on the importance of engaging in productive activities. Posters comprising of measures that an individual should take will be pasted in every election board across the country. Samtan Dolker, BBS News. The setting in of a colder season has hit many countries globally with the second wave of coronavirus pandemic. In Bhutan as well, as people brace for winter, they are advised to stick to strict health protocols. According to the Prime Minister, Dr. Lotus Ring, being complacent would cost the country in ways worse than now. Although the full anatomy of the virus is still unknown, health workers believe it is similar to flu in nature. Both the diseases are caused by viruses that survive in cold temperatures. This uh, spike is happening especially, uh, especially in Northern Hemisphere, the winter season. So a lot of people are now uh, you know, uh, spending more time inside the house than the outside. So that's why now when you spend more time, so you have more contact period time. And because of that, if somebody is uh, having a symptoms or if somebody still has uh, a case or asymptomatic, then that's how you uh, you'll, you'll start uh, spreading the infection among the people in the household. And if they are following all the preventive measures, especially they are wearing the masks and keeping them so little uh, social distancing as far as possible, we can still prevent the outbreak. Kechu sugi shipsel na kachitheno sewachin daregi nam gungi netang nalo nilepa do jinga chigi nangkhe nalo mi bum sumja de chigi neji di thobni me segi de kechu sugi shipsel na tebe dasenu se shunibila nge mawo pshawachin de neji thomi lotab ya juni me segi nesuni me. In his address to the nation yesterday through BBS, Dr. Lotus Ring asked the people to continue observing the COVID-19 health safety protocols. Coronavirus ki neji ti buda da neji ti moma jani ki bechop machop begop mongop deso the missus ki kara lejim be shidi bero lalen matam digi ime se the kecho su ki hisang sabi thundi se shunibi dani bini digi tanga chen nala pa bero. In Thimpu, where winter is relatively colder, people are seen following the COVID-19 preventive measures. This includes places where hundreds of people visit every day. Uh, 
Whenever customers come in, we use face masks and hand sanitizer. I have seen many washing their hands as well. We tell customers to maintain distance when there is crowding. Doctor, <laughs> For now, with the viral disease showing no signs of slowing down and its vaccine still in development, health experts said adhering to proper health protocol is the most appropriate action. This is String Dandup, BBS News. For more efficiency and better accessibility, the incident report system of the National Referral Hospital in Thimpu is made available online. According to the hospital management, this move is expected to encourage more people to report issues related to the hospital's service delivery, which for now is underreported. Every year, the National Referral Hospital officially receives an average of 10 to 12 reports of incidents from patients, their relatives or the health staff. The hospital management said that this negligible number could be due to the lengthy process involved in reporting such incidents. Before the online system was introduced, people had to approach the Quality Assurance Division and fill up a three-page form. Today, the form is reduced to one page and can be accessed from the hospital's website as well as its office Facebook page. If the such incidents are not reported, analyzed, and then measures put in place to prevent such incidents from happening in future, then the, you know, this can happen very frequently, more and more frequently uh, in the hospital because staff could become complacent since there is no reporting and there are no corrective measures put in place to prevent such uh, you know, incidents from happening. Patient safety, quality of care or behaviours of hospital staff are some common complaints identified in hospital setting. And there has always been a growing interest and concern especially among public in measuring how safe hospitals and health systems are. Some of the uh, reporting could be on wrong diagnosis, wrong operation performed, patient falling from bed, uh, laboratory reports uh, not uh, within the, you know, uh, the correct parameters or, uh, you know, giving of wrong medicine to the patient. So these are all incidents that usually happen, uh, uh, you know, in the hospital. Once an incident is reported, a committee within the hospital management will investigate it. The incidents that can lead to death or severe injury to the patients uh, has to go up to, you know, like to the Bhutan Medical and Health Council. At the hospital level, we deal mainly with uh, minor incidents, which are corrective resulting either from system failure or either from like in the case of medicine look alike low then uh, or from the lack of knowledge and competency of the staff besides online the complaints can also be filed verbally with the hospital's quality assurance division of bhutan medical and health council something dolker bbs news now despite free healthcare services the out-of-pocket expenditure for healthcare services is on the rise. According to the Annual Health Bulletin 2020, it has increased from 11% in 2010 to 20% in 2016. 
Out-of-pocket expenditure is expenses borne directly by a patient. According to international research, out-of-pocket expenditure forms a major barrier to health-seeking behavior. The poor sections are forced to resort to borrowings or selling assets to meet this expenditure. It is not free because there are many other costs associated with it. For a health system that is supposedly free, not only within the country, but even referral outside of the country. And, and this to me is very puzzling as to why, first of all, of course, there will be some uh, uh, amount of out-of-pocket payment, but a steady rise and uh, uh, for a system that is supposed to be totally free, I think is a rel relatively significant uh, amount of uh, money that uh, uh, individual patients are paying. According to the Bhutan Living Standards Survey Report 2017, the majority of the health care expenditure was made on Rimdo or Puja followed by transportation. However, expenses incurred on Rimdo or Puja is not considered as an out-of-pocket expenditure as per national health accounts. The recently held health policy dialogue expressed a need to conduct a study. So the suggestion is that to conduct a comprehensive study on out-of-pocket payment to understand who is paying, how much is the out-of-pocket really, because we need to be clear on what is it that we're paying and for what kind of expenditure is it uh, being incurred so that we can look in the system deficiencies where we may be able to rectify that to either uh, uh, sort of hold it steady uh, and ideally to reduce it. As per the Health System Review 2017, high transportation costs incurred in availing health services could be attributed to the country's terrain and in accessing specialized care. The report says, for instance, a patient from the eastern or central part of the country prescribed a CT scan has to travel to the National Referral Hospital. And other reasons could be due to bypassing the nearest health centers to seek consultation at a higher level health facility. Globally, a hundred million people are pushed into extreme poverty each year due to the out-of-pocket expenditure. Sudampem for BBS News. After suspension of more than 10 months, boulder export business in Gelifu resumes. The government suspended export of boulders in April last year after officials found that to avoid taxes, exporters were declaring less than the actual amount of their consignment. And although the suspension was lifted later on, the export business could not go back to normal due to local mobs and non-profit organizations along the route demanding extortion fees and also due to the emergence of the pandemic. Six trucks full of stone chips left for Dubri yesterday. From Dubri, it will be transported through the waterways to Bangladesh. Dubri is 180 kilometers away from Gelivu in the Indian state of Assam. Those involved in the boulder export business are delighted with the news of resuming of the boulder export service. However, this time exporters are using Indian vehicles or Bhutanese vehicles with Indian drivers to ferry boulders with approval from officials and with compliance to COVID-19 protocols. We are happy that uh, the government uh, actually approved uh, our request to uh, provide us with the uh, permission to uh, bring in the Indian truckers and uh, drivers. Uh, but uh, to start with, uh, we'll be only using Indian uh, trucks, Indian drivers uh, uh, within the SOP and within the parameters set, uh, set by the government. He added that export to Nakugaon could not be done this time because of festive season in India. Nakugaon lies in the border of India and Bangladesh from where boulders from Gelifu are unloaded to be exported to Bangladesh. For Karmawandi in Gelifu, Pema Saldun Singh, BBS News. Wellness and well-being is becoming the new exotic for travelers globally as health becomes a top priority amid the pandemic. In keeping with the global trend, the Tourism Council along with the local tour companies is working to promote Bhutan as a destination for wellness and well-being to international tourists when it reopens. These people are learning yoga. 
There are 16 of them who are here at the Faculty of Traditional Medicine in Kawachansan. They lost their jobs in the tourism sector. Today, they are training to become yoga instructors and masseurs. When we go around the country with the tourists, there are like, like lots of coincidences that happens with the tourists. So that time, we will be able to like introduce our, our traditional medicinal plant, which is available here in Bhutan as well. We'll be able to give the little bit of taste of Bhutan in the way of wellness, which we have in our country. They are being trained in meditation, yoga, basic identification of herbs and medicinal plants to guide the tourists on the field. A healthy state of mind and body is the new mantra that the government is tapping on to revive the tourism sector when Bhutan reopens. Given the richness in resources in the field of traditional medicine, the Tourism Council says wellness and well-being will make a good marketing tool. And this we see a huge potential because traditionally, historically also, Bhutan is famous for traditional medicine. Uh, and in fact, our country used to be known as a land of medicinal herbs. So therefore, we want to take our advantage of that and brand and develop Bhutan as a destination for wellness and well-being. And that is globally also that's going to be the main tourism product. The Global Wellness Institute projected that wellness tourism will grow at an average annual rate of 7.5% by 2022. It is predicted that as things get back to normalcy, wellness is going to be a priority for everyone and that people will plan their vacations around it. Wellness and well-being could be a new attraction alongside the rich cultural heritage and pristine environment. For Poop Game, Yishe Gelson, BBS News. Tourism Council's decision to permit domestic tourism has brought in much-needed respite for people affected by the pandemic. The number of locals visiting the pilgrim sites across the country is on the rise every day. And Singezong in Hlinsi is no exception. This group of men came from Chongsa. Having spent a night in one of the homestays in Koma Gyok, they are preparing to walk for three days to the Singezong. Singezong is one of the sacred places visited by Guru Rinpoche. There are no hotels here. Records with the Gyok administration show that more than 200 visitors came here so far. Last year, about 400 international tourists stayed in my home stay. This year, due to the pandemic, I haven't seen any international tourists, but we have many Bhutanese visiting Singizong this year. So far, more than 40 locals stayed in my home stay, and a few people have also made bookings. There are nine homestays in Koma Gyok, and more are coming up. It costs a minimum of 250 newton per head for a night and it goes up to 1,500 Nghitam, depending on the services used. We don't get any income when we keep our homestays idle. But since two days ago, I started receiving guests. We charge 500 Nghitam when we provide food and half the price when we don't provide food. I have been running homestay for almost two decades now. More than 15 locals stay every night. We get some income from the homestay and it helps people like us. The initiative has also benefited locals with horses and vehicles. The government and Tourism Council of Bhutan also invested more than one million newton to construct footpath, parking area and a wall in the village. I am planning to allow the unemployed youth of Tsango Chiyok and Koma Gyok to form a group and organize the trekking to Singizong. They can charge about 15,000 newton from an individual visitor. 
Every year, tourists bring in more than $200 million on an average. But this year, Bhutan lost more than 90% of that amount. Domestic tourism may not have a significant impact, but it is never too late. For Sonam Sring and Lindsay, Chiku for BBS News. With the onset of the winter season, farmers in southern parts of the country are gearing up for winter vegetable production. Last year, more than 15,000 metric tons of vegetables were imported, and about half was imported during the winter season. During winter, seven zonkaks in the south produce fresh vegetables, and at this time of the year, they are working hard to increase production this year. Some vegetables are ready to be harvested, but some are still in the growing stage. We have been cultivating winter vegetables for years now, but this year we are cultivating more because of the ban on import of vegetables. Achieving self-sufficiency and ban of import is a motivation for us. I feel we all got the opportunity to produce winter vegetables, so we will try to produce more winter vegetables. After the ban on the import, all of us in the village are trying to produce winter vegetables. People are interested and have been making good use of their land. We expect there will be more winter vegetable production this year because of the collaboration of farmers, government and specialists. Farmers can not only earn a good income from selling these vegetables, but can also utilize the fallow lands. If we could produce vegetables abundantly, the money will remain in the country. There is no need to import. Secondly, we can make use of all available land. Out here, vegetables are organic as we do not use chemicals. We use the manure such as residue of animals. The imported vegetables contain chemicals. If we import, the money goes out, so it is important to retain inside the country. The Agriculture Ministry said this year the focus will be on the production of commonly imported vegetables such as chili, onion, tomato, brinjal, cauliflower and beans. However, other vegetables will be also cultivated to provide enough nutrition to the consumers. So, Ema Lambenda Gobdi Duchigi Chajina Legutudi, Machigi mandatory crops as well. Nitik Betengobigi Susi. Chili, onion and tomatoes will be mandatory crops grown in all 20 zonkaks. Import of beans and cauliflower has been banned for years and we are focusing on the local production of these vegetables as well. The ministry has been providing greenhouses, irrigation water, farm machineries and technical support to farmers to boost production. Meanwhile, the ministry will be also constructing three coal chain stores to store vegetables in Sarpang, Wandifoda and Tashigang Soon. Stringzam, BBS News. Bhutan's gross domestic product grew by over 2% last year as compared to 2018. However, the economic growth is expected to be negative in 2020 due to the effects of the pandemic. Gross domestic product is the total value of goods produced and services provided in a country over a year. As per the National Statistics Bureau, from 3.06% in 2018, the country's gross domestic product growth was recorded at 5.46% last year. 
The service sector recorded the highest growth at 9.16% in 2019, followed by secondary sector and primary sector at 2.01% and 1.30% respectively. However, the gross national income of the economy grew at 5.38%, which is an increase of 2.68% from 2018. With a population of over 700,000 countries, GDP per capita was recorded at more than 240,000 newtom, which is an increase of 12,400 newtom from the previous year. This is Pasang Doji for BBS News. Now, if everything goes as planned, Bhutan will host the first ever South Asian Football Federation High School Championship next year. South High School Championship will be an annual event for top teams from high schools across the South Asian region. Seven member countries will take part in the event. For this, the Bhutan Football Federation will organize the Bhutan High Secondary School Championship in 2021. 82 high secondary schools across the country will take part in the competition. The main idea behind starting this high school championship is mainly because uh, we have proposed for the SAF high school uh, championship which will be uh, conducted by uh, Bhutan Football Federation and it will be held here in uh, Thimbu, in Changlin Stadium. High school tournament is one of the major tournaments where we get a lot of uh, talented players so that it will be a good scouting for Bhutan Football Federation to uh, scout good players. The winner of the competition will represent Bhutan in the SAF High School Championship. We have already spoken to AFC and other SAF members and also the, SAF, uh, the South uh, Asian Football Confederation where they are very much supportive of the idea and the AFC also they have given us a green signal because they think it is a very uh, good platform and, uh, uh, for the SAF school to perform and also I think um, AFC is supporting us and also budgeting on the financial uh, financial matter also. I think they will support us on all the technicality also they will support us and also um, uh, on uh, doing all the other documentations of the tournaments. The SAF High School Championship might kickstart by next year end. This is Pasung Doji for BBS News. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us.